the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, or as the curse is foul, or as the curse is foul, or as, or as the curse is foul. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes a nation's rule. The glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His love. Wonders, wonders of His love. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful morning this morning. Let's see if I can show you these pretty orange flowers. Just a growing. Uh, we are continuing our journey through Isaiah. Uh, and so we are, again, this Sunday going to have Christmas in July for our worship service. So looking forward to that. Um, we are picking up with more of the story about Hezekiah. And so we're, I know it's a little repetitive because it's such an important story. It's reiterated in several different accounts. So we're going to begin in 2 Kings 20, verse 1. And this is about 700 BC, 700 years before Christ. And we're going to start with Hezekiah's sickness and recovery. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always tried to be faithful to you and do what is pleasing in your sight. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you, and three days from now you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will do this to defend my honor and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah's servants, Make an ointment from figs and spread it over the bowl. They did this and Hezekiah recovered. Meanwhile, Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, What sign will the Lord give to prove that he will heal me, and that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? Isaiah replied, This is the sign that the Lord will give you to prove he will do as he promised. Would you like the shadow on the sundial to go forward ten steps or backward ten steps? The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied. Make it go backward instead. So Isaiah asked the Lord to do this, and he caused the shadow to move ten steps backwards on the sundial of Ahaz. Again in Isaiah 38, beginning in verse 1. 
About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet son of Amos went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always tried to be faithful to you and do what is pleasing in your sight. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then the message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. And this is a sign that the Lord will give you to prove he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backwards ten steps. And again in Second Chronicles 32, beginning in verse 24. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. He prayed to the Lord who healed him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kindness shown him, and he became proud. So the Lord's anger against, came against him and against Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented of his pride, and the people of Jerusalem humbled themselves. So the Lord's anger did not come against them during Hezekiah's lifetime. Hezekiah was very wealthy and held in high esteem. He had to build special treasury buildings for his silver, gold, precious stones and spices, and for his shields and other valuable items. He also constructed many storehouses for his grain, new wine, and olive oil. And he made many stalls for his cattle and folds for his flocks of sheep and goats. He built many towns and acquired vast flocks and herds, for God had given him great wealth. He blocked up the upper spring of Gihon and brought the water down through a tunnel to the west side of the city of David. So he succeeded in everything he did. However, when ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place in the land, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and to see what was really in his heart. Hezekiah's Poem of Praise beginning in Isaiah 38, verse 9. When King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem about his experience. I said, In the prime of my life must I now enter the place of the dead. Am I to be robbed of my normal years? I said, Never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or laugh with those who live in this world. My life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. It has been cut short, as when a weaver cuts cloth from a loom. Suddenly, my life was over. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lions. Suddenly, my life was over. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble, Lord. Help me. But what could I say? For he himself had sent this sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Lord, your discipline is good, for it leads to life and health. You have restored my health and have allowed me to live. <clears throat> Yes, it was for me to it was good for me to suffer this anguish, for you have rescued me from death and have forgiven all my sins. For the dead cannot praise you, they cannot raise their voices in praise. Those who go down to destruction can no longer hope in your faithfulness. Only the living can praise you as I do today. Each generation can make known your faithfulness to the next. Think of it. The Lord has healed me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, Make an ointment from figs and spread it over the bowl, and Hezekiah will recover. And Hezekiah had asked, 
What sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? Envoys from Babylon, beginning in 2 Kings 20, verse 12. Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick. Hezekiah welcomed the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses. The silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see the armory and showered them on and showed them all his other treasures. Everything. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I owned, all my treasures. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord. The time is coming when everything you have all the treasures stored up by your ancestors will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your own descendants will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good. But the king was really thinking, At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. Isaiah 39 beginning in verse 1. Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah welcomed the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them all his other treasures everything. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to see Hezekiah and asked him, what did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, they came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? asked Isaiah. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I owed. All my treasures. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord Almighty. The time is coming when everything you have, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your own descendants will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good. But the king was thinking, At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn this morning is another one that you should know well. Oh, come, all ye faithful. So I want you to take a deep breath. And sing along with me. Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. Born the King of Angels, O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation. O oh, sing, O oh, ye bright host of heaven above. Glory to God, all oh, glory in the highest. 
O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet Thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to Thee be our glory gift. Word of the Father, Thou in flesh appearing, O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. He cries the Lord. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Mom. Hope everybody has a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all back tomorrow morning at 8.